senior night here from St. Louis Park. I'm Bruce Over along with Ray Whitlock and Tom Whitlock. Got the Whitlock boys back again here, and uh, our ratings our ratings went up last, uh, last time, guys. So I brought you back. You know, I love it. I'll come back any day of the week. <laughs> well, it's gonna be a fun matchup tonight. Uh, Waconia having one of their best seasons uh, coming to this game, 20 and five. St. Louis Park Orioles, 12 and 13. It seems like for the Orioles, it's one step forward, one step backwards. They just haven't been able to string them together lately, and. Uh, you know, they have a fun team this year, but they just uh, hovering around that 500 record. Yeah, I, th I think, uh, you know, a lot of that is leadership and, and getting, you know, they're still a young team, and, and how do they come together as a team? Uh, last time they played Waconia, they were within a point at the half. I think they hit seven three-pointers in the first half. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if they can hang with them and withstand Waconia's runs. And with senior night, uh, Orioles will play, put a couple seniors in the starting lineup in this game. So we're going to see Austin Toga and Charlie Odens, along with uh, Marley Curtis, Rashad Kimber, and Micah Curtis. And for this uh, Laconia Wildcat team, they've got a great sophomore in number in, in Will Kirsch, averaging 23 points per game, shooting 53% from the field, 47% from three-point range. They also have senior Gavin Olson averaging 18 points per game, senior Tate McDonald, senior Jackson Hayes, and senior Chris Fulford. So very well-rounded team and uh, a good defensive team too. So they, uh, they've been allowing their point opponents around 65 points per game while they're scoring about 80 points per game. And that's sort of, uh, when you look at the last time these teams met, St. Louis Park uh, lost 80 to 62. So that's right in, in average of where their games have been. They've been scoring 80, giving up 60. And so see what St. Louis Park can do. Waconia's won seven of their last eight games coming into this game, so. Senior night is always a fun night, an important night. I'm excited to see how these guys start. I'm sure the energy is gonna be sky high here. St. Louis Park in the black uniforms. The Wildcats in the white. Tip control by the Wildcats. Quick three. A little long. Rebound by the Orioles. Marley Curtis into the front court. Gives it to Micah. Tries to take it along the baseline. He draws a foul. I think that's going to be important tonight for St. Louis Park to attack the basket. Uh, see if they can uh, get uh, the Wildcats in some foul trouble. Uh, and just continue to be aggressive throughout the night. I think also don't give them a chance to set up defensively. Just if you can transition, just move that ball quick down down the court. I think the other thing that's kind of uh, hindered St. Louis Park is just the turnovers uh, that they like to speed it up, um, but that also causes opportunities for turnovers. So uh, we'll look to see how uh, they handle the ball tonight. A little pressure put on by the Orioles. They get the steal. Micah takes it all the way to the basket. Almost a travel there, but uh, full court press again for the Orioles. Go! Good job. And the three is off. Rebound by Marley Curtis. Marley, he stops, shoots. That one comes off out of bounds. Last touch by the Wildcats. The Orioles will get it back here. Well, I think uh, Coach Richardson is uh, interested in starting fast with that full court press and see if they can get some quick turnovers and build a lead here. You can feel the intensity here. The players are into it. Nice jump shot there. The crowd's into it. Just as important as pressure defense is getting back after the press is broken is equally as important. Man up. Open for the three, Olsen. That one's in and out. Olsen gets his rebound, takes it to the basket. Doesn't go. Another tip up doesn't go. There's a lid on the basket early on for the Wildcats. That, that was nice persistence by Hayes just to keep uh, keep the ball up high and, tr and try to keep getting that in the bucket. But I, I, I like how St. Louis Park has started. Uh, I don't think they want Waconia getting comfortable in any of their offensive sets. Uh, and uh, so far, so good. 
Jackson Hayes with his first free throw. Foul was on Micah Curtis, that's number one for him. Or is it gonna bring Javari Ellis into the game? And Ellis has been an important player for uh, Park. Uh, and, and keeping him on the floor is important for Park and making sure he doesn't get into foul trouble. Ellis. Good composed jump shot right He got there. the cue from you there, Tom. <laughs> Warriors go for the steal, they get it. Kimber, nice pass by Kimber with the missed shot. That, those, that senior night jitters for Toga. Oh, Kimber does a good job. And the Orioles are hustling right now. Toga gets right back to help cause that turnover. Kimber for three, up off the backboard. Orioles fight for the rebound. Here comes a fast break for the Wildcats. A nice left-handed roll by. Olsen, 7-4, Orioles lead. Margolis ready to check in for the Orioles. You can tell this is gonna be a fast back and forth game. Being able to do both and stay composed by playing fast is gonna be the key here. Malik Akindeli comes into the game for the Orioles along with Margolis. Drive to the basket, doesn't go. That was uh, Jackson Hayes, or else a break in now. Micah to the basket, he takes it all the way. He's got a great step, he, he, can, he can pick up his speed, his pace, and it was a great job. That was a great finish. Well, you can see this pressure is, uh, is making the Wildcats a little uncomfortable. Uh, and I think that'll be key for the Wildcats uh, to kind of settle down against this pressure defense and uh, try to get some easy buckets off it to pull pull the press off. Um, so, so far they haven't been able to do that. Head coach is Daniel Rubishko for uh, the Wildcats and for the St. Louis Park Royals, Arsenio Richardson. Got a good crowd here tonight. Very good crowd. Love to see the students here. We got an Arsenio Fathead in the top right. <laughs> I need to pan over a little well, bit to see that one. <laughs> so Ray, a, a, as a point guard, when you have pressure like that, what are the keys to getting the ball up the court? Don't dribble right away. It, the defense is banking on you, dribbling right away and speeding you up. You need to keep your pivot, pivot foot down, look up the court, and hopefully your wings are in a good position to either come back or move forward to move the ball up. And we're gonna foul on the floor. Couple good opportunities for Waconia, but uh, Jackson Hayes just unable to get that ball in the hoop. I thought Akindale did a nice job there uh, attacking the basket. Down pass to Ellis, looking to take it down the lane, had to dish it off, ran into a roadblock. Here's Margolis. That time, uh, Micah Curtis had a mismatch on the defender. He had the size, but uh, just missed the shot. Yeah, he got himself into that rhythm and, and actually got a good shot there. Five-point Oriole lead. Oh, good pass inside again, Hayes. This time he gets it to go. Good, solid possession by Waconia there. Slow it down. I think there was six, seven passes there and ultimately got a layup. Three-point game. Just an FYI, we do have a shot clock in this game that we probably won't see ever go off. <laughs> Foul on the Orioles. Yeah, that was a good aggressive move by Olsen. Yep. 
We saw Hayes with the put back there. Well, and you can see uh, Waconia has kind of sneaky speed. These guys are uh, have a pretty good kind of first step burst uh, to attack the basket. Leo Mulfinger in the game. Also Marley Curtis back in for St. Louis Park. <laughs> Second free throw is good. A oh, one point game. Ellis, a lot of jump shots for the Orioles here. Well, you can see the Orioles are at their best when they're getting pressure and getting turnovers and getting buckets in transition. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see in this game if they can get into some offensive uh, sets in the half court that can get them uh, quality shots. Put back is good. Waconia finds ways to stick around the hoop and get those loose balls and, and quick baskets. Park needs to do a better job of boxing out. Drive of the basket. That's Ellis. Yeah, he's such an important part of this team. As quick as St. Louis Park plays, they have good offensive sets that you can see, and right there it, it showed. That Meath cutting to the basket. Now Hayes dishes off along the baseline. Shot is a good follow up, is good. Jackson Hayes. They're dominating the inside on the offensive board there. Kimber. Oh. I think that's really important for this St. Louis Park team to get some production out of their guards. Um, and, and so far this game, they have been getting production. Meath has it deflected. Ellis, and he's going to, Meath was going to get called for the foul. You can see how active Ellis is. He just out jumped him for that ball. Good to see both players getting up from that one. Solid bench activity from both teams right now. With yeah, Rickard, Rickard's in the game now. Playing that quickly, you're gonna need gonna need some substitutions. Oh, that one way off the mark by Mulfinger. Mulfinger gives them such a nice presence uh, around the hoop. I thought he did a great job the last possession, just protecting the rim. Jackson Hayes just dominating inside right now for the Wildcats. They lead 14-13 here. Micah takes it along the baseline, trying to get it to... Uh, Small finger. He's sort of crap. Little hook, not good. Good defense by the Orioles. They come up quickly. Micah along the baseline. And he's going to call for the charge. Baseline wasn't open. They're quickly going to take Micah out with two fouls. Yeah, just kind of lowered his shoulder there a little bit to clear some space for himself. So it'll be interesting now to see how long they keep Micah on the bench for. With two fouls, you'd like to keep him out for the rest of the half, but I think they're going to have to probably bring him in with this. Yeah, they, they want to keep this tight here. Well, and the, the press is so effective with the Curtis brothers up front, they're just able to deflect a lot of passes. Wow. Great finish by Hayes there. It's the Jackson Hayes show on the offensive end for the Wildcats. Understanding most points for Waconia are coming within the paint or within 
15 feet. We'll see if St. Louis Park sinks down a little bit more. Being cautious of the three-point shooters, obviously, but. Already 11 points in the game for Hayes. Rickard had an opening to the basket. Passed it back out. Kimber drives. A little strong. Out of bounds. Arsenio Richardson trying to have it go the other way. <laughs> he, he, he was in position. <laughs> well, I think as a coach heading into sections, uh, you know, your last home game of the season, uh, this is an important game for Park to kind of set a tone heading into heading into sections. So Gavin Olson and uh, Jackson Hayes have most of the baskets turnover. Yeah, I think this is a dangerous time for Park. Uh, those kind of quick shots when you're not working your offense um, just create uh, opportunities on the other end. Um, so Park, Park needs to have some quality possessions coming up here. Well, let's see if Arsenio will, he likes to save his timeouts for the second half, but this one doesn't want to let this one get out of hand either. Margolis, he can't hit. Everything's the push into the basket, driving out of bounds. Last touch by the Orioles. Arsenio trying to find the right combination for the Orioles here. Yeah, the, 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 they haven't been able to get into the press because they haven't had any made buckets recently. Um, so they're not getting those easy turnovers that they had been getting earlier in the game. They got off to a quick start, and now everything's been with Konya. They got to get that one basket, and hopefully that turns yeah. the tide for them. That's a chance here. Kimber, and we're going to call the foul from behind. It's going to be on Soren Marker. 13 foul for uh, Laconia, and that's going to send Kimber to the free throw line. Kimber averaging 10 points per game. That was a nice steal by Kimber on the other side of the floor to, to create that opportunity. Nice to see when you get rewarded and you get a chance to score on the other end. Violation against the Orioles. Kimber's not going to get the second shot. Go! Move it! Well, Coney did a really good job coming out of their timeout on how to break the press. They yep. haven't had any problems since their timeout. Back up top. Or else go for a kill and it's going to be a foul on Marley. I, I love the aggressiveness there, but that was a, a very solid defense possession up until there. It, it's tempting going for those those steals. I, I felt it myself, but when you're kind of deep into the shot clock like that, manning up and sticking to your guy is, is what you got to do. Odin's uh, kind of ran through ran through a pick there. High. <laughs> so six team foul, one more, and uh, they'll be in the bonus. Three is good. That was the first points for Kirsch, who averages 23 in a game per game. 
Yeah, it's kind of been the Hayes show so far. Good answer. See, that was a, that was a really nice possession for Park. They, they were patient, they waited for the opening to get a quality shot. So they had the numbers there. set up in the circle there. I thought he had position. Yep. But he might have been in the circle. Kimber back in for St. Louis Park. Seventh foul for the Orioles. Only four right now for the Wildcats. Free throw by McDonald is good. And Meath is going to come back into the game for the Wildcats, Jackson Hayes will uh, get a well-deserved breather. I think, Bruce, going back to what you were saying at the beginning of the game, just about uh, Park trying to build some consistency. Um, you know, these are really important possessions. When you're down 10, you're still in the game um, for them to work through their offense and get quality shots. Ellis, good, good nice separation. Step back. Yeah. Yes, good jump shot. You might feel like you want to get it all back at once, the three-pointers, quick, quick jump shots, but running your offense like that and getting a solid bucket is, oh, is what you need to that do. That was a bad break for the Orioles. They had the steal and then it was intercepted. Kirsch missing the three. Orioles get the rebound. Here's a break for the Orioles. Good job. The Orioles is taking that to the hoop. That was Austin Toga. He'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, that was a good good attack by Toga. It might be nice to see the left left hand there, but uh, you know, after missing that little one uh, earlier, uh, to come back and attack the basket like that, it was a nice play by Ellis on the other end to create that, uh, get the rebound and get it out. Kind of game where uh, you got to make take advantage of every opportunity, and you got to make your free throws um, when you're playing a team like Laconia. That it's an uphill climb. You talked him right into that one, Bruce. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't be jinxing him either. If you <laughs> well, you got to give Laconia credit to beating that press. I mean, it's almost like. There is no press, how quickly they beat that. Finding that middleman, not dribbling, looking up, and. Yeah, that was, that was unfortunate for Park, because they played good defense there, and it just, it slipped out of Hayes' hands, uh, right, or Fulford's hands. Uh, he almost got an assist, turnover to an assist. Nice free throw. A good test for the Orioles because they're gonna, after this game, it's the sections and there's an opportunity where they get seated that St. Louis Park's first game could possibly be against Hopkins, so. Win or lose, playing a, a well-rounded team like Waconia right now is, sets them up for a good success in the, in the sections. Rickard trying to get around Kirk. That was good defense by Kirsch. Yeah, he just kind of held his ground there. Yeah, it, it would be nice. As, as it's going to be hard for Rickard to finish around the hoop like that, um, but like a quick pull up right there. Yeah, and again, right now, the game's going McConia's way because uh, Micah Curtis having two fouls, he's had to sit out pretty much this most of this first half. A lot of veterans on this uh, team too, and there's a three-pointer by Olsen. Yeah, I, I like how Ellis has come out today. Um, he's been really engaged offensively. And you have three scores for Waconia on the, on the court. St. Louis Park's got Two real consistent ones. Normally, when they have uh, 
the, the Curtis brothers, but they need to find the third scorer and that fourth scorer that can be a little more consistent on the board. And they've really got control of, of the offensive game here, getting high percentage baskets right, on, right, high, right underneath the basket. I like to see the slowdown from Park right here though. Run the offense, get a good shot. Yeah, we're struggling right now to a point where I wonder if they're gonna end up bringing Micah in the game. Yeah, this is an important five minutes here to close the half. Looks like Park has backed off the press for now. And your two taller players, Micah and Marley, are both on the bench at this point. Wow, there's another break. Fumble yeah. in it to the basket, and it worked out there. And again, that's just really good hustle by Waconia. Lose the ball, but go right for it. Beat the other team to the basketball. There's a hip out of bounds, and it's going to be Waconia's ball. I almost uh, like to see the Orioles take a timeout here, but. Right. Yeah, you can you can see uh, some heads are starting to hang a little bit. They gotta they gotta find a way to start getting some points. Spin move to the basket, tipped out of bounds by the Orioles. Laconia twenty and five. Winning had, seven of their last eight games, so. They've had a really nice year. Call number nine, and Norios are gonna have to bring Marley Curtis to get some height back in the game. I love Margolis' leadership there. Yeah. You know, he, he brought everybody together, um, you know, trying to keep everybody's head in the game here. Yep. Right now, it's easy to unravel as a team, but that's what you got to do as a point guard. Even when you're down, get the boys together and, and come up with a plan. This is similar to the Benil St. Margaret game at Benil, where the Red Knights really just dominated the first half, and then Park came out in the second half and really played a great second half against them. So. Margolis hits for three. That shows good leadership, too. Yep. <laughs> 15 point Wildcat lead. Hayes is back in the game. Hayes. Olsen. Long cross court pass. And again, right underneath the basket. And that was Kirsch. Yeah, solid really good finish by Kirsch there. Yep, solid defense by Park, but just good persistence by Waconia. Sort of one and done on the other end. Yep. <laughs> Waconia's done a really good job controlling the defensive boards. Good spin move by Hayes. Yeah, that's tough to guard. Odin's much needed shot for Odin. Laura's yeah. oh, take a timeout here with 306. There's there's the timeout. And I think Arsenio probably figuring that it's important to end this half strong, you know. It's so uh, I think that's a good time to call the timeout here and and uh, yeah, only down 16. Uh, there's a lot of game left. Um, and, you know, if they can cut into this lead a little bit more going into the half, they're going to be well within reach. And although running the offense might take time off the clock, that's what's going to get you the shots. Like you said, Bruce, there's been a couple possessions where it's just one shot within five seconds and then 
you're done. There's no offensive rebound. So, yes, sacrificing time to run good offenses is kind of what you have to do here. How hard is it, Ray, for a player that like Micah, who, you know, one of the star players on your team, and is having to sit out about 10 to 12 minutes in the half? I mean, you know, it's it's got to be so hard to sit on the bench and watch watch when your team's losing. It is. It's it's a struggle, but I'm I'm hoping he's thinking right now that he understands it's a foul situation and just to be a little bit more composed in the second half and and don't pout and, and shut your mind because your team needs you. Long pass, Margolis can't save the ball, but good hustle. It was, a, it was a nice uh, steal by Mulfinger, just a little too far ahead um, of Margolis to get an easy bucket there. And Park has been so good in transition. A That's a nice play by Ellis. To, it's almost a jump ball there. Well, Tip right, Orioles can cut into that 16-point lead. 43-27 our score. Marley from way up top. Gets his own rebound, puts the second one up, and this one's good. Long shot, long rebound. I feel like Margolis has given Park a little spark. Uh, he's playing with a lot of energy. Well, they can't give him the baseline, though. Jackson Hayes is just controlling. I think I think Park, you know, heading into the second half here, Park's going to have to find an answer for Hayes. Odin. Either bring somebody over for some help uh, or get a little more physical with Hayes. Another basket for Hayes. Pass was behind Marley Curtis. That was a tough pass uh, that Ellis just made. It was just kind of wrong shoulder. The Orioles need to have help on the other side too. Yeah, at, at this point it's looking at double teams or. 23 points in the first half for Jackson Hayes. Oh, good bounce for Margolis. You know, Jackson Hayes has caused uh, the fouls too. He's had so many opportunities. Oh, what a what a what a good finish by Olsen there. Yep, stop good short, touch. hit the floater. Well, Cody has already put up 51. Marley hits the three. Well, he says, time to just chuck him. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to pull it out for one here. Gavin, Gavin Olson. He loses that. Still time for the Orioles. Five seconds. That's going to be a blocking foul, but... Basically, they had a foul to give, so. Yeah, 1.8 seconds here. Almost in the shooting motion there. Well, they're going to bring Micah in on offense here. Probably look for something going to the basket here. Good tell Micah, by tell Micah just do not charge the player. Finger looking to pass it in. Has Mike up, puts up the three, he's got it. Well, a great move by the coach. Yeah. <laughs> that, was a, that was a good coaching decision. And uh, you know, you look for some positives and uh, 
you know, that's a positive when you go into the locker room and you hit that last shot and you're only down by 13 now. So uh, game's not over by any means yet. So. No, well, well within reach. And if they're hitting threes like they did in the last three minutes there, uh, they're going to be fine. But they need to find an answer to Hayes. Uh, Hayes had a wonderful first half. Um, and uh, St. Louis Park either needs to get more physical with him or throw some more bodies at him to, to make life a little tougher. I think one last positive, too, is St. Louis Park holding Kirsch 23 points a game to five points in the first first half. That's humongous. Right. You, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and Kirsch, you know, they haven't really had to hit the outside shots because everything's been... Uh, they've been able to just keep continue to work the ball inside and uh, and get those high percentage shots. I think if you looked at a shot chart, there'd be a lot of shot shots from inside that paint, um, and that's what the Orioles have to do. They got to force them outside a little bit more and really control the paint area. And I think when you get Micah back in the game, I think they can do that. Yep. Hopefully yeah. that doesn't uh, Micah doesn't pick up fouls in the process. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be fun to see uh, how they respond in the second half. I think, especially thinking about how they started the game and the energy um, and, uh, you know, just the ability to turn them over quickly and get fast points. St. Louis Park can get back in this game very quickly if they can get those turnovers. Ray, they had you in the locker room after the, the one uh, Oriole win. What did you say to the team? <laughs> That I miss, I miss this type of stuff, and and don't take it for granted. Whether you win or lose, there's always things to work on. There's always you got to appreciate the positive things you do. It's not always focusing on the negatives. Know the things you're good at, um, but also critique the things you're bad at, and just enjoy the time you got here. Enjoy, enjoy your teammates, um, and keep improving. It goes fast, doesn't it? It goes lightning fast, lightning fast. This seems like yesterday, but it's. It's been years. It's crazy. Right. All right. So 51-38, uh, our score. We're at halftime. Stay with us. We'll have the second half coming up shortly. Social Security is with you through life's journey from birth to retirement. As your life changes year to year, so do your needs. For over 80 years, Social Security has helped to meet your needs and is committed to improving access to the services that make a difference in your life. Today, you can verify your earnings, estimate your future benefits, apply for retirement, manage your benefits, and even change your address, all from the comfort of your home. Social Security's online services help put you in control with secure access to your information anytime, anywhere, allowing you to spend more time with family, friends, or simply just enjoying the day. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. See what you can do online at socialsecurity.gov. Produced at U.S. Taxpayer. Well, we're just underway here to starting the second half. Well, let's see if uh, Park can uh, pick up where they left off. And they do, Mike, Good start. Uh, with the basket. The, the takeaways on defense here should should have been clear in the locker room of protect the paint and, and hedge down when the ball's in the paint, like right now. Outside for a three. Off the mark, Curtis with the rebound. Taking it to the basket and the foul. I just heard Arsenio scream to the rim. So it seems like that's that's the takeaway offensively too, and it's two I think for two you, right here. I think you can force, uh, try and get some of the players in foul trouble. I mean, maybe you can get Jackson Hayes to get a couple fouls, yep. you know, trying to defend, so. Yeah, I, I love Coach Richardson. He's always got the pedal down. He <laughs> <laughs> got that right. Nothing's changed. <laughs> Really a big little run for the Orioles as they're only down by nine, and that's much more manageable than when they're down by 16, 17 points. So. Nice pass, and that's Jackson Hayes cleaning up. They still played pretty solid defense on that possession, even though they gave up a bucket. 
A little bit of a weave going for the Orioles here. Yep. Oh, good follow up oh, by Odin. Good finish by Odin's there. Yep. Just as Waconia does, attacking the basket and having guys floating down there and getting those easy buckets exactly like Odin's did right there. Okay, Ray, I, I have a question for you, Ray. Uh, so the Curtis brothers playing with your brother, uh, you know, great, but can be challenging too. You got any tips? <laughs> you, were, you were able to play with your brother Joe for a while. <laughs> yes, yeah, shout out Joe Whitlock out in Las Vegas right now. One of, one of the best shooters in St. Louis Park history, I must say, better than myself. But yeah, there's always that competitive edge, edge with your brother. I mean, you always want to do better, but when you're on the same team, it's, it's good collaboration and you kind of have that just subconscious instinct where I know he's going to be in that corner, I know he's going to be cutting, and it's there's certainly some challenges, but much more positives playing with the brother. So shout out Joey. Great, How much great. time are you on the playground together too? You know, the two of you practicing together and, and yes, kind of many years play. on the blacktop outside playing in the front yard. Maybe a couple fist fights, but we'll <laughs> save that for another time. <laughs> You came out unscathed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm here right now, so we're all good. That's why Joey's out in Vegas, right? <laughs> yeah, we needed some time away. <laughs> good defense by Odin's there, staying in front of him without fouling. Well, you can see Waconia is still trying to work the ball inside, and uh, that's been their game plan throughout this game is to try and get the higher percentage inside shots. Orioles have this game in single digits. Well, I think what they're trying to do with this weave is, uh, the, the weave just, it pulls defensive players kind of out of position and creates little creases that you can attack the basket on. Mike was trying to go one on one that time, lost the basketball. Well, you can see Park is talking more on defense. What a nice shot by Olsen. Yep. It's tough going under the screen like that, creates just enough separation to get that three pointer off. Jackson Hayes had 23 in the first half, Olsen with 13. Leading score for the Orioles was Marley Curtis with 10 in the half. Marley with the turnaround jumper is good. Marley's shot has just improved so much as the season's gone on. It, it's you really you know, they're so on. in balance, and you know it's just a really nice open shot. It really gives you sort of a good, you know, because you have Marley who really is more of an outside player. He can hit the outside shots, and then you have Micah who really likes to take it to the basket and more of the inside. So it gives you a little bit of that inside-outside play with your two big guys. It's a great one-two punch for, for St. Louis Park. Olsen's going to be caught for traveling. Ellis it's, had great position there. Yep, good quick switch. Stay in front. Marley with the three up, but good oh, rebound. rebound. Good board. It's above the rim on that one. Well, Micah sat out quite a bit in the first half, but he's already up to like 12 points. So. And we're going to get a foul on the drive. Yeah, not much help on defense there. Kirsch was able to find that crease and take it all the way to the hoop. Great offensive board by Curtis. Yep. William Kirsch, an 80% free throw shooter. What I like about watching William play is just that he, you know, he averages 23, and as a scorer, you like to get the ball a lot, but he looks like an unselfish player. He's, 
you know, when, when the play's open inside, he'd rather see Jackson Hayes or someone get that higher percentage shot than him forcing a shot from outside. Correct, so often with players that have 20 plus points a game, when they have five at halftime, they try and force a bit to get your points, but he's playing pretty composed right now. Ellis missing the open jumper. Back down on the other end, Hayes, basket and a foul. Laconia, a good free throw shooting team, too. Well, Mike, uh, well, backside rebound. See, just by attacking the basket, he missed the layup, but provides opportunities for your fellow teammates to get rebounds like that. Olsen. Kirsch did a nice job of penetrating and finding the open player on the perimeter there. Two three-pointers this half for Olsen. Long shot by Marley Curtis. A oh, fast break. Olsen again. Marley with a quick shot, it's good. Kimber's doing a nice job on Kirsch this possession. I think he's going to call yeah. for traveling, yep. A little too long of a step trying to get yeah. that little roll. Yep. Arsenio called for the double team and it was a little bit late, but. Well, and they're getting that help there, right? The yep. Curtis brothers came together to make it a little more difficult for Hayes. Bring Rickard in as the point guard here. Nice. Good job by Josh as he just comes in the game and uh, gets the basket. Yeah, I think Waconia was thinking they were going to go into the weave there, and Rickard just found an opening. Rickard, a sophomore for the Orioles. Good job by Rickard to cut off the baseline on Olsen. Look at Olsen. He just finds his way in there. Are you stepping on the baseline, I think? Nope. Yeah, I think Rickard was out of bounds. Yeah, right there. Yep. Olsen, tough to guard. I see Rickard looking right at his stomach when he's guarding them, though. That's how you stay in front. Looking at his head or looking at the ball, that's how you get faked out. Micah. Kimber. Oh. Tried to... Try to go back to Micah, but Micah had cut to the basket. I think they would have wanted Kimber to take the shot when he had it in the corner, because Kimber's a good three-point shooter. Yeah, these shooter. are getting to be important possessions for Park. 12-point game. Another drive to the basket by Hayes. Well, and you can see Mike is afraid of getting that third foul. Yep. It's going to be important for Park to get quali quality shots on these possessions. There's going to be a hook, I think, against the Wildcats. Yeah. That was a nice play by Akindale. Kind of forced him into that foul. Me picking up the foul, that's number two for him, second team foul for Waconia. Margolis pumps the three too long. And jump ball, gonna go to Waconia. All right, 
with Micah sitting here, it's going to be important for Park to find points. They got both Curtis uh, brothers out. Oh no, Marley is in. Nice rebound. Yeah, that time Olsen got just stuck under the basket a little too far. Akadeli doesn't go. Akadeli trying to get the rebound on that. Does a good job keeping it alive. But yeah, way to stay aggressive. Follow your shot. Well, you can His see Olsen and Kirsch are much more active this half uh, than they were in the first half for Wakona. Three-pointer. Nice pass inside, Hayes. Follow-up is good. He's padding his stats on the rebound category too there. <laughs> Mike are ready to get back into the game for the Orioles. And this time Toga hits the three. Yeah. I like that he went back nice to it. He missed, on missed one tonight. on the last possession, came back and hits it here. Marley couldn't get the rebound. It's another opportunity for the Wildcats. Doesn't go. Put back, not good. Boy, they're just controlling the boards. And that's tapped in and a foul. Four or five offensive rebounds. Soren Marker just doing a great job on the offensive boards. Watch Soren here. It's persistent, staying with it. Another opportunity doesn't go. And the tip in that time by number 13, that was Kirsch. As counterintuitive as it might sound, it's you can't go for the ball on the rebound. You gotta find your man, box him out, and make sure he doesn't get the ball. Yeah, Mark, Marker really sealed Curtis off on that one. Go. Back to a 16 point game, so. Yep. Both teams have shown it's they can score. Three pointers, post game, jump shots, it's gonna come down to who can play defense. Uh, a little double dribble. dribble. Yeah, double dribble. We saw the Gophers, you know, score like 90 points this uh, this week, but uh, unfortunately they gave up 105, so. <laughs> yeah, that, that Illini team, pretty tough. They are. You look at it here, like Laconia gives up an average of like 60, 65 points. St. Louis Park already at 57 here, but Laconia is, you know, who averages 80 points a game already at 73. See, Park has transitioned to fronting in the post on Hayes there. Trying Shot clock at 10. Do. That was a tougher shot. Rebound. First, nice find. Meath in the foul inside. Nice interior passing there. Yeah, you watch right here. Kirsch with a nice pass. Well, I'm not sure who 21 is, but I mean, just moving without the ball. I mean, that bucket was all him about moving without the ball and cutting to the basket. Yeah, Simon Meath. Yeah, as, as important as Kirsch is and the points he scores, he can kind of act as a decoy right there when you think he's going to shoot the ball, and then he passes it down low to his center. Saved by the Orioles. Kimber. Defense now not letting the Orioles take that inside shot. They're going to have to hit yeah, some outside. Mark, Mark has shown a lot of energy for Waconia. Kimber doesn't get it to go. Ball on the ground. And we're going to push against Kirsch. Third foul of the half. 
These next three minutes are going to be really important for Park as we hit the kind of stretch run of the game uh, to, to nibble away at this lead and, and get back within striking distance. Correct. Well, now you have Kirsch and Hayes going to the bench, so now here's where you need to maybe take some advantage of that. Yep. Less than nine minutes. This is essentially the fourth quarter. Or else just can't get the shots to go. It was really a good job by Ellis to get back, but good finish. Tate McDonald. Heath almost had the steal. And a foul. You know, it's interesting. I, I thought Park had some good success right at the beginning of the game with the Curtis brothers up front in the press. And uh, St. Louis Park hasn't gone back to that uh, at all. Another foul on the Orioles. Nice play by Ellis there. 76-58. Wildcats with the basketball. Right. Micah Curtis with the steal. Tries to pass it across and we get a foul. Hello. Foul call on Tate McDonald. That's number two for him. And Hayes and Kirsch will come back into the game. So short. Short rest for those yep. guys. Leo Malfinger back in for St. Louis Park. And Arsenio is going to take a timeout here. Yeah, I don't think he liked what he saw as they set up there. So the Metro West Conference standings, you can see Benil having a great uh, season, 12-1, 16-9 overall, and Waconia right behind. A uh, big win for Waconia. They won't be able to, uh, unfortunately, take uh, take the Metro West with the way Benil has played, but uh, but still a great season for them. And uh, then you have Chanhassen, Orono, and St. Louis Park. Chaska normally is up there, but they're uh, right. they're trailing a little bit this year at 6-7. In the bottom, you have Jefferson and New Prague. And actually, Benil St. Margaret's playing at New Prague tonight. So, well, and I think if you if you kind of look at the big picture here and where Park was at the end of last year, you know this has been a year that they've grown, uh, they've taken a step forward, um, and they get, uh, obviously probably going to get a tough draw in sections. But as you look forward, they're getting most everybody back. Um, and and the key is how they can come together and take another step forward next year. That's right, Tom. A new coaching staff for them this year, and uh, they've done well. They started off 0-5, um, but they, they really came on after that. So. And one. Olsen. The, the game's not over, but but as the time ticks down and and as it might potentially seem like it's slipping away, these are extremely important minutes. I mean, you still got a section game coming up. There's still season left, so continuing to focus on running your offense and and playing good defense and sticking together, these are valuable minutes, whether you win or lose. 
24 points in the game for Gavin Olson. He's, he's had a great game. And you can see Park has shown bursts. I mean, they can play with most anybody uh, at times, and it's building that consistency that's going to be so important moving forward. Odens came off the screen, hit the three. Or so close to getting the steals, and then they end up right into the Wildcat yeah. hands, and they end up converting. Fulford with his fourth point of the game. Back to 20 point game. Odin's. Nice to see Odin's attacking the basket like that. I mean, I, I feel like they've gotten some nice production tonight out of Kimber and Ellis and Odin's. Uh, and that's going to be important moving forward to continue to get that kind of production. I think Mark Ola shows a lot of leadership as well. Charlie with eight points. Playing his last game on the St. Louis Park Oriole home court. Go well, There's been a few Odins that have come through uh, Park Basketball. Offensive foul. Let's see if they can give Margolis a shot here for a three. Senior calling players from the sideline here. Marley saw an opening, took it to the basket, draws the foul. Be a two shot foul, but the Orioles will be in the bonus. Sometimes it's as simple as that clear out, make a move to the basket, and go up strong. said it earlier, Bruce, pretty good free throw shooters we've got. There yeah. really have not been many moments in the second half where both Curtis brothers have been on the floor. Jinx. Jinx did. All right, I won't say that again. <laughs> <laughs> You'll learn that one, Ray. Yeah. That was a rookie mistake. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's how you learn, right? There you go. A little short, but uh, I'm going to give Margolis an assist there. Yeah, that's too. right. We'll call that one a pass. <laughs> Way to stay in front. Good defense here. Three off the front of the iron. Now we we'll get travel. Oh, foul. They're going to call a foul. Put the Orioles Park's, at the line. Park's still fighting here. There's still six minutes left in this game, and it's only a 16-point game. I noticed you're a little quiet on this free throw attempt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. All right, I'm learning. I gave you an assist. <laughs> Good defense by Park here, picking him up at half court. Yeah, I think uh, Waconia has seen a little bit of run here, and, and their coach wants to make sure they understand that there's still six minutes left in this game, and they're only up by 14. Yeah, you know, St. Louis Park has played it pretty evenly here in the second half after a you know, tough first half, but 
you know, such a game of runs, and, and but St. Louis Park is uh, is fighting and, and trying to slowly work their way back into this game. I think Arsenio's done a good job with the substituting, trying to keep players fresh here. Agreed, and, and knowing it's a game of runs is important, understanding when, when Laconia's hitting a couple jump shots in a row and they're on a nine, 10 point run, your time is coming, don't get down, battle back, and, and your shots are gonna fall too. I'm gonna make a prediction that uh, Jackson Hayes will have one of the next shots inside. You know, they're gonna put him inside, get a, get a, have an opportunity here. He's got 32 in the game, but he's been pretty quiet the last four or five minutes, so. For the steal. Oh, he's passing it out for a three, and it's good. Thorn <laughs> Marker with the three. Yeah, they actually played uh, solid defense there. Why Kimber just cannot hit that one to go. He's had a tough game. Came with three points so far tonight. And it's parking in front. Hayes. Well, they've been at the right place at the right time. They've had a lot of those little uh, tip passes that have turned out to be positives for Park. Yeah, five in a row now for the Wildcats. And Marley Curtis with the big basket. Okay, now you have both Curtis brothers coming in. It'll be interesting to see if Arsenio uh, shifts into a full court press again to see if he can get some turnovers. They had success right at the beginning of the game with that. So Marley back in the 20s, he's got 22 again in this game. Had a nice run his last six, seven games. Kimber is going to be called for, I think it's his fourth. The aggressiveness on Park is seeping over to just a bit too much aggressiveness. Kirsch three for three from the free throw line. Especially when you know you're in the bonus, just don't stop being aggressive, just keep those hands off a little bit. This is the second. We're trying to cut into a 17 point lead. Ellis has not had much luck at the rim. Marley doesn't get to go, nice rebound. Mike, a basket and one. Mike has been crashing the boards when he's when he's been in the game. Yep. Yeah, he's had a he's had a lot of offensive rebounds. Um, and they they give teams a lot of trouble when the two of them are on the court together. I think Arsenio is choosing to kind of stay back and uh, and and play defense and and make him use the shot clock. Okay, here we go, now it's, they're back into the press. And a foul yeah. on Jabari Ellis. You, go, you see Ellis was a little frustrated there. Waconia is 
putting on a clinic now and beating that press. Get the middleman, look up, hit the wings, and exactly like they did right there. So take McDonald with the last basket. That gives him seven in the game. Go to the free throw line to finish off a three-point play. And the Wildcats approaching the 90 mark now. Marley spin move. Boy, he did a great job to get that one to go. He was pumped too when he went down after getting that one to fall. Park has shown an ability to score, um, but they need to find a way to get some stops against Waconia. We got the press here. Oh, they almost had the steal. So close to getting the steal, but then uh, when you miss the steal, you have numbers on the other end. Oh, Micah had it blocked. Nice, nice block by Kirsch there. Lead at 15, Kirsch takes it all the way to the basket. Good direct line drive, needed it's, some help defense there by Park. And they've done a great job not allowing St. Louis Park to get the long runs. It's a team that, Waconia team that can score in droves. All right, get a chart. Don't forget, yeah, we did get we got a charge there. Charge, yep. Second offensive foul of the game against Curtis. Couple back to back to back drives by the Curtis brothers there. Waconia kind of figured that out, got in front, and took the charge. Lead back at 17. Cats will take some time off the clock. Olsen passes it inside, stolen away. Yeah, Olsen gave him a fastball to the shins. And Akindale gets fouled. So he'll be shooting two. See if Park can finish strong here. Have a couple of good offense possessions, stand down on defense, and finish strong. 16 point Wildcat lead. Laconia looking for their 21st win of the season. Good defense by Micah. Let's say Marley had his leg out. Again, Park, so many possessions of 10, 15, even 20 seconds of good solid defense, and it's just those tough end of shot clock defensive fouls hurt you. Kirsch's 15th point of the game. Yeah, Kirsch has had a really nice second half. He's been much more aggressive here in the second half. Doing more than just scoring. There's a block. 
blocked. Neath. I like the idea with the floater. Good defense there. Samuel Kirsch in the game now. Toga. Toga's had a nice uh, game for senior night. Yeah, it's good to see Toga and Odins both getting on the in the scoring column with uh, six, seven points apiece. So, yeah, after after uh, putting all that energy into years and years of St. Louis Park basketball, um, to know this is your last home game uh, and to get some points is a really nice way to go out. And actually, Charlie has 11, so uh, you know, that's a good. Guy. Yeah, he's hit some nice threes here in the yes. second half. You know, Javaris Ellis has been very quiet here in the second half. Yes. Well, I think for Park, you know, looking forward, um, that there, there's things to build on. I mean, they've got some real talent on this team, uh, and it's just trying to figure out how to get it all to come together, uh, to work together. Um, and the defense um, tonight, um, you know, giving up 95 points so far. Uh, they need to find a way to clamp down on defense. 25 points in the game for Marley Curtis. He's the real leading scorer. Mike has 18. Kirsch. Another Kirsch. So Sam. Samuel Kirsch with the basket. That was a that was Kirsch to Kirsch there. Got a few brothers on the court. Yeah, and the Orioles uh, will rest the Curtis brothers, make sure there's no injuries before their section game. Sort of surprised Laconia isn't. Uh, they're going to go to the bench. It looks like so. Kindelay got a little aggressive there. Yep. Great to see uh, Waconia team make a nice run in the sections. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you can get like 20 that. wins in a season. Well, they got some real talent on that yeah. Waconia team. It's not Toga a fluke. getting yeah. a nice, nice hand uh, by the fans and his family. All love on senior night, win or lose. Shot in and out. That was Natesel for the Orioles. Well, I'll tell you what, the seasons just go by so quick. It seems like we're just starting the basketball season. We're already in last game of the regular season. It's just, uh, seems like the season's just too short. Ah, oh, I feel that. I mean, when I was a senior, I'm like, first game, I got 20 plus more games. This is gonna last forever. And then, yeah, Bruce, you blink and you're done. Good quick movement there. Miss shot. How much uh, emphasis, like for a lot of these players now with the AAU teams and stuff, you know, what what do coaches look at more? I mean, because AAU is such a, a big thing uh, with all these select teams and everything. So do the players get watched more in, in the AAU games or do, do, how much do they to the high school games really matter for some of these players that are being recruited? 
That, that's a good question. I think it's a pretty 50-50 split. I mean, AAU has just absolutely blown up. And, and to be successful during your high school season, you do need to play AAU. And there's a lot of more college coaches that watch AAU than before. And I think it's a healthy balance of both AAU and, and high school Yeah, I think, I think uh, to me, AAU is where they identify the players. And then when the high school season comes around, that's when they're trying to lock those players up uh, to get to whatever schools they're going to go yeah, to. Yeah, good point. Well, there's a couple, a lot of players that look like they're going to, they'd be fun to watch in the AAU games. And, yeah. and Jackson Hayes is one of those with, you know, leading scorer in the game with 32. Um, impressive performance, too, with uh, Gavin Olson. I thought, I thought Gavin really looked good in this game. Yeah, yeah, they have some nice pieces on that Waconia team. Um, really complimentary. Hayes is really tough down low. Some really nice pivot moves. Good footwork down low. Uh, and then Olsen and Kirsch are really tough. Yeah, yeah. I'm, Waconia really did it all. I mean, they've got the three-point shots. They've got the jump shots. They can slow down and run offense. They can speed you up. And yeah, if Hayes is playing like that, they're going to be a tough team to beat. Yeah, Gavin had 24. Uh, William Kirsch, 16. You could call that an off night, but he, you know, uh, again, he's just uh, probably, we don't have all the other categories with assists, steals, and things like that, but he was he was in a lot of the plays. So, uh, you know, great performance for Waconia in this game. And uh, St. Louis Park, they just couldn't get up to that 500 mark. They fought all year to get over that 500 hump, and it seemed like one step forward, one step backwards, and... Uh, Still, after a, an 0-5 start to finish 12 and 14, they have to be proud of what they've accomplished. Yeah, I think they took a, a major step this year, um, and uh, and I think like tonight's game was actually kind of a microcosm of the season, where um, they were able to to jump out, but then they fell behind, and they made some runs to start to get it close, but they could never pull all the way uh, back to a tie. Um, and I think, but they have some really positive things to build on. And at the end of each game and at the end of each season, you, you have to appreciate the positives and look at the negatives. I mean, the positives for, for Park, when that press is working, they can speed teams up and, and turn them over. And, and on the flip side, when they get on the offensive side and slow down and run your offense, they've had solid 20, 30 second possessions where they work it around eight passes and, and get to the bucket. On the flip side, a couple negatives. Those last second fouls deep in the shot clock just just kill the possession. Um, and then that better post defense, if you've got a center scoring 30 points a game, you need to make quicker adjustments to hedge down or, or double team. So appreciate the positives um, and look harder at the negatives to go forward. For the Orioles now, they go to the section tournament. And we look at this section six and, and what a tough section it is going to be. And uh, you know, you have why, right now Wyzetta and Hopkins probably the favorites, but don't count out other teams in that section. You you know, you have some really, really good teams in there. And and, uh, and then even uh, Washburn is uh, um, having a great season too. They're going to be a tough team. So, uh, so I think uh, if you want to go see some good basketball, come out to the section tournaments. And it uh, um, looks like St. Louis Park may be playing um, Hopkins in their next game. And, and, uh, and that... Just be fun to watch that game. I'll, I'm sure I'll be out there. Uh, at the There's going to be a lot of talent on the floor. So uh, if you want to watch some good basketball, that's a good place to go. Also, the, the ex-St. Louis Park coach, uh, Dave Breitenbuecher, <laughs> yeah. he'll have a good uh, intel on, on the St. Louis Park Orioles scouting report. So uh, Yes, it'll be a great match. Helping on the bench for Hopkins. <laughs> but, uh, and again, we want to thank everyone for uh, joining us this season. Uh, our crew has done such a great job tonight. We had Paul and Leah in the truck, Andrew, Robert, and Ray doing a great job uh, on the floor. And then we had Ray and, and uh, Tom. You guys are awesome. I, I love working with you guys, and, <laughs> and I can't wait till next year when we do it again. So. Yeah, it's a oh, lot of fun. That's so, what Bruce, I, I, want, hear. I want to ask you, so what number season is this for you? Uh, you've been a, a stable uh, <laughs> in play-by-play -play for park basketball for a long time, so... Thank you for all you do. Sure, it's about 43 and, and two years doing KDXL radio, so I think I've been here for 45. You started when you were 10 years old? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> seven. Uh. <laughs>
Anyways, thanks again for joining us. Final score here with Konya 98, St. Louis Park 79. Take care. Good night. Good night.